What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frankie Candles and in today's video we're going to be talking about Market Cipher. Now you've probably heard of Market Cipher if you've been into crypto or trying to learn about trading. There's probably a good chance that you've heard of Market Cipher at some point. Basically Market Cipher is an indicator that encompasses a bunch of different indicators all smashed into one uh, which is easy to read and helps you identify where money is going, where the momentum's going, and it gives you a better idea of where you can enter your trades. In my personal experience, it's the best indicator I've ever used. As soon as I started using Market Cipher, I saw an instant increase in my profit, and it's definitely, in my opinion, the best indicator that's out right now. I know a lot of you have been wanting a Market Cipher tutorial. You guys see me use it on the streams. You guys are asking what everything means, how I use it. Uh, so here it is, Market Cipher tutorial number one. We're gonna be going over Market Cipher B today. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay guys, here we are on the charts looking at Market Cipher B. I'm just real quick gonna point out what everything is and then we'll go further into detail on how to use each piece of Market Cipher B and what everything means. But right now I'm just going to go over uh, what each thing actually is. So right here you can see these green waves coming up and growing and then coming down and kind of going back and forth and then eventually curving down. And then you can see it crosses over the zero line right here. Um, you can see right here, there is a line that is the zero line. As money flow crosses the zero line and comes down, this wave turns red and comes to the bottom of the zero line as a red wave. And this is the money flow index. This basically shows money coming in and out of the asset. Now you see these yellow waves right here. This is the VWAP or volume weighted average price. You can see this also comes down past the zero line, crosses back above the zero line, and it goes oscillates back and forth as you can see. And then you have the blue waves right here. Uh, these are called momentum waves. And then you have these lines up here, which is the RSI. And you also have the green and red dots uh, that print on the momentum waves and down here. So first, let's jump into money flow. Basically, when you're looking at the money flow index, what you're looking for is the red money flow index coming up to cross over this zero line right here. As you can see, uh, you have money flow starting to come up. Now this would be a sign that money flow is coming up and will soon cross the zero line and turn into a green wave, indicating that we are going to have some positive price action. And sometimes if you can get in right before this money flow wave, is crossing over the zero line. You can catch that move early and get in lower as the money flow comes into the green and you get that positive price action. Um, so sometimes that's a good place to enter is right before it crosses over the zero line. And then you can see it crosses into the green and we kind of peaked out on this wave right here and then came back down, eventually came back up a little bit, but then curved back down into the red. Now, if we pull up our chart, you can kind of see how this correlates with price. I'm gonna pull up a longer time frame just because it's a little easier to see. So here we are on the daily chart and we have the green money flow wave crossed up from the red into the green. As this happens, you can see that price was coming up. Money flow came down a little bit, price as also came down, and then we came back up into the green as price action continued upward. And eventually we come and you see it starts to flow down and you see, look at that, price is coming down as well. Finally, we cross over into the red before continuing much more downward price action, which is happening as the red wave is getting bigger and bigger. As we peek out about right here, you can see price found a bottom right there. And as money flow starts to curve back up, look at that the price starts to move back up. So this is a really good indicator because it basically just shows the flow of money. Is money leaving the asset? Is money coming into the asset? And like I said, if you can get in on these upward curves before they turn green, you can catch the upward price action. It's a great place to enter trades, obviously using other confirmations. So with the money flow index, basically what you're looking for is good curvature, just nice round curvature. You can see we start curving up here and you can see price is making 
making a nice move to the upside. And then as we get to the top, we start to come down a little bit. You see we started to move sideways a little bit before eventually coming down as the green wave comes closer to the zero line. And then finally we get into the red a little bit during this summer consolidation period for Bitcoin. And then the red money flow wave starts to curve back up as we got a move to the upside, flipped over the zero line and came into the green before we saw much more green price action. So it's money in, money out, pretty simple, nice and visual so you can see it. I mean, just generally, you know, big wave, big price action, little downward, little downward, big wave, big wave. Now this is a really important thing to keep an eye on, right? Money flow's coming out, I can see this, right? So I'm not gonna set a long because I'm expecting this to come down into the red to give us further downside and if you did set along uh, around here, obviously you would have gotten wrecked because price went the opposite way. So definitely a good visual representation uh, to keep your eye on where money is going. So next, let's talk about the VWAP. So the VWAP, as I said, are these yellow waves here, also oscillating up and down over the zero line. So basically with the VWAP, as it crosses down over the zero line to the lower part of market cipher B, you're gonna expect downward price action. And this could work as a great indicator to let you know when to get out or get into your trades. For example, if you have your VWAP wave about to cross down over the zero line to the lower part of market cipher B, you wouldn't wanna be putting a long in at this point here because you can expect that price would move down. And look at this, guys, it, this is the most powerful indicator. You see this VWAP crossing over, you can assume that price is gonna come down and look at that, it came right down. So super, super powerful. Uh, if you come to the longer time frames, it's a little bit easier to see. If you zoom in a little bit here, you can see that we had a weekly VWAP crossover right here. That was the start of a massive run up before we crossed back down over the zero line just for a little bit right there before crossing back up. And then we finally came down. We got this little red candle right here and then came back up for air and we got some more price action to the upside. Now scrolling forward in time a little bit as the VWAP stayed below this zero line for quite some time right here, we had a massive, massive dump. But once you cross back over upwards, over to the top of the zero line, this was the start of a giant move upward. And then we had a little dip here, represented by this little VWAP coming down right here before crossing back up and having another giant move. And right now we had been spending some time under this zero line and it gave us a giant move to the downside. But now we are crossing back up and you can see we're starting to see the beginning of this upward price action. And uh, the longer the time frame that you're looking at, the more power these indicators have, right? So on the weekly, these VWAP crossovers can bring us up, you know, this one brought us up about 65%. If you come down to the five minute and you try to find a crossover, you can see right here, we did cross over the zero line, however, uh, this move does look big and it is tradable, but it only brought us up, you know, about 1.6%. So on the longer time frames, you can expect these indicators to have much more impact and much more power behind them. Uh, but definitely useful on all time frames. It's just a little easier to see the massive moves on the on the larger time frames. So the VWAP is good to uh, kind of let you know when it would be a good time to exit or enter a trade. So you're not gonna wanna be entering along when you see that the VWAP is crossing down. You can see right here, we cross over the zero line. You're not gonna wanna put along there because you know that the VWAP is coming to the bottom of the zero line and you can expect downward price action and look at that right here. So you could see we moved down uh, so you would have done much, much better for a short. So it's good, same thing as it comes up. You're not gonna be wanting to enter a short as you're crossing up over the zero line because you know you're starting to cross over that zero line and you can expect upward price action and look at that, it plays out. So very, very, very powerful tool. So next let's talk about momentum waves. The momentum waves are these blue waves, as I stated earlier, um, you know, they oscillate over and under the zero line. So what you're looking for with the momentum waves is general curvature, right? So you can see that we came all the way down here and you can, if you draw a line, you can see that it's generally moving in this direction you're moving upwards, right? So this would be an indication that price may be about to move back to the upside. Uh, and if we bring our chart back up, let's see if it correlates. 
as you can see, momentum coming up as we're coming down, right? So we're coming down, but the momentum is getting less and less and less and less. And then finally you get these moves to the upside. Um, so you're just looking for general curvature, right? So again, you can see right here, uh, you know, we had, we were above the zero line, we came down, we have these massive momentum waves down. Then we came up a little bit, gave us a little positive price action before coming right back down. And you can see that we came down deep again before curving back to the upside, uh, which moved price upward. And then we crossed over the zero line uh, before getting much more upward movement. So you can see here, even on the smaller time frames, I'm looking at the 15 minute right now, you wanna get nice curvature, right? So if you look here, we do have momentum come down and then look at this, we come up, look, it's, it's moving in an upward direction. So you can expect some positive price action and you can see right here, we came up right here and uh, look at that, we got some upward price action. Uh, so you're looking for just general momentum. This is the way that the momentum is going. And uh, you know, you could go back on the chart. I recommend if you have Market Cipher, just get it and go back in time on the chart and just try to learn uh, and, and just see how it behaves, right? You could just go back and back test it. Like right here, you, you can see that, you know, Generally, momentum was coming down, and then uh, you know we did take a little bit of a dip before popping back up really quick. You can also see, uh, zooming in a little bit on Market Cipher B here, you have a negative 60 and a positive 60 here, represented by these white lines. And anytime you see a wave come down below this 60 line, you could think of this as oversold. And then uh, if you come over this white line of positive 60, you could kind of think of that as overbought. So I definitely recommend going on the chart if you have Market Cipher and go and look for this, look for these, uh, you know, this, this nice curvature on these momentum waves. But you're just looking for general flow, right? And then when you have, when you have, see, you have this momentum, you see it curves up and then it stays up there a little bit and it curves down. You also at the same time have your money flow curving up and then curving down. And you can see right here, momentum is coming up as money flow is coming up and then you come into the green with your money flow right here. So you're just looking for general curvature between momentum and money flow up and down uh, to try to predict where the price is gonna go. So next, let's talk about the red and green dots. So the red and green dots are basically buy and sell signals, but I don't recommend just trading the red and green dots. Uh, and I'll show you why in just a second, but um, you can see them right here. You have a green dot on the momentum wave here, green dot on the momentum wave here, another one here. You have the red ones up here. Now this would be, you know, these red dots would be signifying a sell, right? These would be signaling a sell. And then the green ones would be signaling a buy uh, because it's signaling a bottom or a top. Now, if we come back up to our chart, for example, right here, we have a red dot, right? We had, a we had an upward price action, and then you see the red dot for the sell signal, and you come down before you come right here. You didn't even come down to the zero line, you print a green dot, and then you get upside, another red dot here, downside before, so you, could, you can see they're essentially buy and sell signals. You get another green dot right here, you get upward movement, and then you have another red, uh, you have another red dot right here, and you do see momentum curving down, so you can expect downward price action, and then you get a green dot here, and you get upper price action, so on and so forth. Um, so basically it just indicates that price is, is a buy or a sell, uh, but I'm gonna show you right now why it's not smart to just trade these red and green dots. Uh, we're still looking at the 15 minute. I mean, this is all, like I said, uh, the indicators are much more powerful on the higher time frames, but you can, they are useful on every time frame. I do like to point that out. But you can see here, uh, sometimes these dots can fake you out, right? So you don't just wanna be buying these dots alone. You'll see a green dot. You're gonna be thinking, oh my God, the price is going up. And uh, you know, uh, it's a buy, it's a buy. And you're gonna put in a trade, right? And granted, if you did buy this green dot and hold the trade, you would have made money. Uh, but a lot of times you have that green dot and then you have another red dot. And you know, we talk about these emotions coming in while you're trading. And 
uh, you know, right here, you see that red candle, you get the red dot and you're like, oh no, I just got a sell signal. I'm in a long, like, should I cancel it? Should I, should I close out the trade? And then you're gonna close out the trade and you're gonna get all nervous and you're gonna take a loss and then only to be fooled and get another green dot to print here, uh, you know, and then you come over and you get another red dot up here and you're like, oh, oh no, oh no, he's gonna go down. And then finally you get brought back up by this green dot right here and you get the move to the upside. So I do recommend that you only use these in uh, in agreement with other confirmations. Uh, so again, never use these alone. So I think that's it for the dots. Uh, just always remember, don't only trade them. And you know, you also have these green dots down here, which is, a uh, these green dots are basically bullish reversal signals. Um, and I, I think it's important for people to know that, you know, a lot of people see these green dots and they think that it's the bottom and they're going to the moon, right? Especially if it's on a longer time frame. But uh, I do recommend that you don't just trade these green dots, although sometimes it does work out. For instance, in this situation right here, if you were to just buy this green dot and hold for a while, you would have gotten a nice gain. Um, but they signify a bottom, right? Especially if you're in a downtrend or a bear market, uh, you're, these green dots are gonna pop up everywhere and none of them are gonna really hold because you're in a downtrend on the macro scale. Uh, you know, on the longer time frames, you're in a massive downtrend. It's always gonna think there's a bottom and it's not always gonna be the case. So again, the key is confirmations. So I think that's all I got for you guys today. We talked about the VWAP, we talked about the momentum waves, we talked about the money flow, and we talked about the red and green dots. Um, I just wanted to make this to kind of give you guys an idea of what each indicator does, what everything means, and what you're looking for when you're doing your analysis. Uh, so I hope that helps. I hope you guys learned something. So go hit the charts if you have Market Cipher, and like I said, go back in time and back test, right? You wanna look what happened previously on the chart, uh, see how Market Cipher B was behaving using what you learned in this video, and see how price action reacted, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be surprised, you'll catch on quick. Hopefully that helps you guys out, and it helps you guys get into more confident trades and gives you more confirmation so you can make that bread. That's all I got, guys. I'll see you in the next one, Frankie Candles out. Here we go, at the top of the glass on a roll, and it's time to run it.